Hi, this is just going to be a quick follow-up video to a previous one I've done doing some uh, basic power line analysis attack on one of these Lagarde digital safe locks. This is a CMI uh, basic safe made in Australia and click here if you haven't seen the uh, previous video because it's got lots of detail on various things. So I thought we'd do just a quick follow-up video, just uh, looking a little bit more detail in exactly what's happening here on the power line for this particular lock. Let's go. Now, as per the previous video, we're doing nothing fancy here at all. We've just got a 10 ohm resistor in series with the 9 volt battery on this Lagarde uh, digital lock here. We've just got a standard uh, times one uh, scope probe. You don't want to use uh, times uh, 10 you can because you're just attenuating a very low level uh, signal. We don't really need the uh, bandwidth, you know, to get 5 10 megahertz uh, bandwidth on a times one probe is uh, certainly adequate. And on the um, scope here, we actually want to uh, set this up for you notice all the noise and stuff and crap, all sorts of things we're picking up. So we want to put on some uh, on high res mode there just so we clean up that signal. Now, the first thing I want to check we were doing single shot capture before with uh, like the first button press. So we were checking for any vulnerability on the first button press to see if it was good or bad, to see if it was actually uh, doing, um, see if we could see any differences on the power line of how the processor inside here, inside the safe, actually uh, detects the first key press. And we really couldn't find any vulnerability on that first key press. So we're going to do subsequent key presses uh, now and see what if it uh, de see what it does at the end of entering in all six digits. Now, the first thing I want to check is actually uh, we want to go into uh, instead of a regular single shot capture mode, what I want to do is I want to change the time base. I want to go into roll mode here so that the thing rolls across like that and we'll be able to see, if I press a button, we'll be able to see the transitions happening in real time. Now, this is the interesting thing. Let's take a look at this. Now, when we press the button here, as you saw, we were getting in uh, signal excursions, which actually went off uh, scale here. And that's fine, because we want to look at more of the fine detail in here. So we're at one millivolts uh, per division at the moment. Sorry, it's a bit difficult to get this shot. I'm trying to get the lock and the scope in the same shot. I've had to turn my lights down here so that they didn't wash out the screen because we've got the white here. It's all, it's actually <laughs> reasonably difficult to... Uh, shoot this thing cleanly. But anyway, we've got roll mode, so we can continuously see it. So what we want to do now, you can see that it's basically nothing there, okay? One, one millivolt per division, we're getting no noise. The uh, processor inside the lock, well, in, in the inside of lock, it's not on the outside here, it's on the inside, as we saw in the previous video, it is shut down, it's sleeping, it's just waiting, doing nothing, waiting for that key press to interrupt it, wake it up from its sleep mode, and uh, start up. Now, Watch this, okay? If we press a button, it doesn't matter what button it is, okay? So it could be seven. The code for this one, by the way, is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six digit code. And if we enter the uh, code, as I said last time, incorrectly more than I think three or four times, it'll actually lock us out for like five or 10 minutes. So that's a, a very useful security feature that these locks use. So you can't just brute force them, even if you know what six uh, numbers they are. In the combination you can't just start uh, brute force so, but let's push it and watch what happens okay now you see it was clean there but look boo, we're getting some ripple on there now that is obviously the processor has not shut back down the process is still going boom look at that you can see that it's shut down so if we actually uh, I can time that so let's actually do that again here we go and let's time that and see how long it waits for the next key press. And if that key press doesn't come along, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go, ten seconds. So, oh, so if you don't press a second key within ten seconds, it'll shut back down and reset that uh, key sequence. So there's a potential for an attack sequence there if uh, we could detect individual key presses as I said, it has that lockout mode, but only if you go through all six digits. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, seven incorrectly, okay, that's one incorrect key press. If I do that another couple of times, then it will lock us out permanently. And that count resets if I do the correct 
key sequence here. Okay, so in theory, if there was a way to uh, exploit and detect the correct keys in that sequence, you would actually have quite a, you would have an infinite number of shots at it, provided that you waited for that uh, 10 seconds to exit that uh, key sequence and reset uh, that timer. You wouldn't get uh, hit by that entry delay um, thing that they've built into the lock. So that's a potential way in. It doesn't mean we're going to find anything. And I've actually verified that by doing that like 10 times in a row now, and it does not lock me out. So I effectively get unlimited attempts at doing not only the single digit, but also up to five digits. As long as I don't, don't go to that sixth digit within the 10 seconds between each period, then it'll time out and I get infinite number of shots at it. So yeah, that's a potential way in perhaps if there is any power, power line vulnerability on this thing. Okay, so what we want to do now is compare the first and second key presses to see if they're different. So here we go, we've waited the 10 uh, seconds, so this will be a first key press. I'm going to trigger. I've changed it back to uh, single shot uh, capture mode, uh, YT mode. It's not rolling anymore. And I've set the negative trigger level down here so that we're capturing, this is the uh, beep pulse which we established in the previous video. That's the physical beep in there. It does all the processing before that. Now that's what happens if you press the first button. Now we can actually store that waveform as a reference just like we did last time. So I can go into my reference menu here and I can go save, we can change, save that. Bingo, there we go. So now we can recapture that and make sure that's exactly the same again. So let's do it. Don't know, I can't remember what button I pressed last time, but look, it's identical. We get this uh, wake up, the processor seems to wake up here, seems to shut down, maybe do something. Well, they're the pro I think they're the processor ticks that we saw last time. That, that noise, you see how we had the consistent ticks like that? Anyway, so it's powered up, it's doing something, it's processing, and then it's going into that beep. So it's exactly the same, regardless of which button we press. I think this is more detailed than what we got last time. So I can repeat that again with the number zero, for example. And now this is rather interesting. I press zero there and that's what I got. Zero seems to be different to all the other numbers. If I wait the 10 seconds, which I've waited, okay, because I've been yapping on here, I press any number here, I don't know, five, right? then we get exactly what we got before. And I can do that. I've, I've gone through off camera here and I've uh, uh, checked them all and they all do exactly that same thing except zero. So we can do number nine, for example. Okay, I think we've waited our 10 seconds. Bingo, we get exactly the way, same waveform. But if we wait that 10 seconds again and do zero, Zero seems to be special, so I'm not sure, because uh, the program mode for this, you normally have to press star and then the uh, sequence and, and stuff like that. So I'm not sure why zero first is producing a different result. Not sure what the deal is there at all. So I just slowed the time base down by one notch and let's try zero again. It's no, it's exactly the same, but for some reason it doesn't trigger on it properly. Um, it, yeah, it doesn't, even though my, my trigger level like, is like right down here, it shouldn't trigger on Maybe there's some extra noise in there from number zero. I'm not, I, I don't know, but it seems very consistent. So it could, I might just put that down to some sort of uh, uh, triggering type thing. Anyway, it's, it's exactly the same wave shape. I mean, if I go like that and... Uh, shift that over like that, bingo, it's exactly the same. Now here's the interesting one that we want to get, okay, if we do number four like that, okay, that's our first key press, doesn't matter what key it is, it's no different, so there's no vulnerability on the first key press. We do the second one within uh, 10 seconds, bingo, look what we get. This pro and that um, sort of like a processor, regular processor noise that we saw before, okay, but it, it's different. We don't get this pulse here before, and I've actually expanded this time base right out. And as we saw in the roll mode before, the, these ticks just go on forever and they're exactly the same. Uh, they keep going for 10 seconds because it's powered up. So there's only something different here and here like that. So I can save that waveform as well. 
Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the correct sequence here and I'm going to store the correct sequence for the second digit. So I'm going to go one, re-trigger the scope, two, okay? So that is the correct digit. Uh-huh. Okay, so we now have our white reference waveform there. That was the first uh, digit. And then the second digit, which was the correct digit, is now this green waveform. So now I'm going to do the same. I'll go one, and then I'll go three, which is an incorrect sequence, and see if there's any difference. So let's give that a go. One, and then single shot capture again, and three. Bingo! It's different. That's interesting. So now we can save that one again. We can uh, enable reference three here, and let's give it a different color. Let's give it a light blue here, and we can actually save that as reference channel three. So now we have three waveforms saved there. The white one is the first key press. The green one was the second correct sequence key press. And the light blue one, which is different to the light green one, and that's interesting, is the incorrect sequence. So I'm going to see if that's exactly repeatable with uh, the, the correct one, but like instead of one and three, I'll go like one and eight or something like that and see if it matches that new light blue waveform. So here we go. One, single shot, and like seven, lucky seven, shall we? Bingo, it matched the blue waveform for the incorrect sequence. That's fascinating. <laughs> oh, we might be getting somewhere. So now what I wanna do is capture a correct sequence again. But instead of having one and two, for example, I'll get it further on in the sequence. So I might get, say, three and four in the correct sequence, and it should, you know, if the, th if the theory is right about there being a vulnerability of the power line on here in the way it actually processes sequence of numbers, correct and incorrect, then it should match the green one and not the light blue one. So let's give that a go. So one is the correct number. Okay, so I'll just go like one, two, three, single shot capture, four. Oh, it's not quite following the green, is it? It's not quite following it. Look, it's, uh, it's different again. That's a bit of a, I was hoping for that to be the same. But you can see it's lower amplitude here, it's higher amplitude on this one, it's... Okay, let's try. Yeah, that one's higher amplitude, that one's lower. So, that's fascinating. So let's, let's try that again for a different uh, sequence further on. It could be because it's got more numbers to process and that sort of jazz. So let's try the next one up. Let's try, uh, well, it's, well, we, no, let's try four and five, for example. So, one, two, three, four, single shot capture, five. Ah, bingo, that one matches the green, so it might have been some anomaly or something like that. I can try the other ones, but it matches. So that yellow one, as you can see, that yellow one matched the green one. So if it's a correct sequence, it's one waveform. If it's an incorrect sequence, it's another waveform. Oh, that's got, that's got power line vulnerability written all over it. I'll just try that sequence three and four again. Three, single shot capture, four. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different. That is that is fascinating. Hmm. Let's try two and three. So one, two, single shot capture, three. It matches the green one. So what's different about three and four? That, uh, off the top of my head, it's it doesn't seem to have any real significance, but I could be wrong. Now, I just wanted to re-verify that uh, the correct 
sequence, digit sequence was repeatable. You know how I captured the green waveform before with one, two? Well, it doesn't seem uh, completely repeatable now. It seems to be like one of two types. I, you can see the yellow waveform I just captured. Now, I'll do it again, okay? So here we go, I'll do one single shot capture, two, and occasionally it'll match the green one, but often it doesn't. So I, like, it is not repeat, like sometimes it's repeatable, I get it like three times in a row, other times it's not. And it's, um, so it's not like there's some sort of random function in there, or you know, some sort of randomness in the software, because it seems to be like one of two different um, scenarios. So let's see if I can get it again. There we go, got it, right? But we can actually try that again. Let's wait our 10 seconds. So I'll just jabber on for another little bit. And that's got to be 10 seconds, surely. So let's try it again. One, two. Hey, it matched it. No, may it not down here it didn't. So it's, yeah, it's really not 100% reliable, but there is definitely something there at least. So let's put aside that randomness there and say that we have found a vulnerability here where we can find two correct digits in the sequence like this, uh, i.e. we can identify which is a good uh, two digits in the correct sequence and which is two digits in an incorrect sequence. Well, to find just the two digits, we have to try all the combinations. So we've got to go one, one. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, all the way up to 1, 9, and then 1, 0, of course, because you can it can be the same number in the same sequence. So you've got to try 1, 1. And, of course, you can't do more than 5 at once. So you'd have to do 4 and then stop. You'd have to wait the 10 seconds for the timeout and do the next one. And then if you haven't found it, well, you've got to go through all the sequences. You've got to go 2, 1, 2, 2. We can go all the way through to 2, 0. And then, once again, at each... Um, after, you've entered, after you've tried two of those, you've got to wait the 10 seconds. Then you'd have to go 3, 1, 3, 2, blah, 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 and all the way. You'd have to try every single sequence just to get two digits in sequence like that. And you might think, okay, well, you can calculate how much time that's going to take you, but which two digits is it? It could be these two, it could be these two, it could be these two, these two, or these two up here. You don't know. So really... Even if there is a genuine vulnerability there, it's like it's pointless to try and exploit that via a brute force attack like this. It's just, you know, gee, you should be there forever. You're better off just bloody drilling into the safe. And those math nerds can go through the uh, and work out, you know, how much time it will take you if you've only got two attempts like this and it can be any two digits in the six digit sequence and the average amount of time it's going to take you. So, you know, if you, know, you could be rotten luck, could be having a real bad day, Murphy could be right on your ass, you know, and it might take to the last digit to get the bloody thing. So, you know, ah, oh, man, it's just horrible but any math nerds want to do the math on that go for it right so there may or may not be something there i th i think we like i think we may have actually found something but anyway let's go on and see what happens if we uh see if there's any extra processing at the end of the six digit sequence like that let's see what uh if we can find anything there all right let's do the correct sequence one two three four five single shot Six and you heard the double beep there. That means the correct sequence. So we can store that as our correct uh, sequence waveform. Here's just a little annoying thing with the Rigol. When you're saving reference waveforms like this, look, you can enable all of these reference channels, right? Up to ten reference channels. How many colours have you got to choose from? That's it. You've only got five colours. What? And the other annoying thing is it doesn't tell you your currently selected colour there either. It tells you your currently selected uh, uh, reference waveform there, but, you know, how about your current colour? Jeez, you know, how hard is that? Anyway, saved. All right, so that's our stored correct six-digit sequence that opened the lock. Now we'll do an incorrect sequence. One, two, three, four, five... Single digit, seven. Hey, look at that. Whoa, that's interesting. So once again, I think we've been duped by the time base there. So let's actually try that again. I'll just uh, 
do the correct sequence just so I don't accidentally lock myself out or anything dumb like that, okay? So now we'll do the incorrect, uh, the incorrect sequence again. Five and single shot capture and seven. So we're at a slower time base now. So then we can scroll, we can now move that back because we've got the detail to do that now. And uh, that's where it starts. So it's got, yeah, look, it's got a funny little, funny little jaggy there and it doesn't line up in time, well, actually, I'm not going to say it doesn't line up in time sequence, because it does. If you align the start there, that certainly lines up. But look, that's different, okay? That is definitely different. Now, I'm going to enter, like, a completely incorrect sequence now, okay? So I'll actually stall that one as uh, reference 5. And the other annoying thing about the Rigol is this uh, selection control here is incredibly touchy and it, like you only have to just breathe on it. You fart halfway across the room and the thing moves. And also when you go to press the button like this, um, you can often cause it to move just before you press it. It's just, it's really, yeah, it's very touchy. They need to do something about that. Oh, bloody hell, it selected the wrong colour. I wanted orange and it didn't. Do it. Oh, it's what it's what's it done? Arr! All right, so our orange waveform in there is the correct one, okay, in the correct sequence, and that uh, white slash uh, gray one there is our incorrect sequence. Let's verify that incorrect sequence again. So I'm gonna go just, I don't know, like eight, two, three, four, five, single shot. And two, I don't know, something like that. There we go, yep, hang on, no, this has gone back up here, instead of going back down there, like the other one. So something, once again, that's, yeah, that, that's changed. We've got this huge spike there, which we didn't, it didn't go all the way back up before, it sort of started going down there. So it looks like there's some sort of difference between the... Uh, between, you know, like a close number and one that's not perhaps. Hmm. All right, so let's do one that's, say, halfway in between. One, two, three, six, five, four. Ah, that one's identical. See, this is like the non-repeatability, like I was seeing before on the other one when we're checking for two digit sequences seems to be something happening there again perhaps because look it's matched that uh that gray that white one we had before when we did one two three four five and then seven and now we did uh one two what did we just do one two three six five four or something and it's an identical waveform but there is a difference, so let's do the repeatability again. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Let's try that again, and it should match the orange waveform. So, oh, I don't need a single shot capture that. One, two, three, four, five, single shot, seven. So there you go, it's exactly the same again. So let's, uh, let's keep going, let's just run another sequence, shall we? I better do, actually, damn it. Oh, I locked myself out! Oh, oh, people were probably screaming at me there. Yep, I did three in a row and locked myself out. Oh. Okay, let's do the repeatable correct sequence again. I've waited my 10 minutes or whatever went for the timeout. God, that was embarrassing. One, two, three, four, five, single shot, six. Boom. Yeah, that's good, it matches. So, I'll just oh, shuffle that across. The Rigol's a bit, not hugely responsive to the vertical, uh, the horizontal position control. It's a bit, uh, once again, a bit touchy. You get some overshoot there. It's really annoying. But yeah, it matched that orange waveform that we had before. So, bingo. Um, let's do it uh, one more time, just for kicks, shall we? Five. Single shot sequence, six, safe opens, and wah, no, see, look, it shuffled that, look, that's low amplitude, this is high amplitude, so it seems to, 
it seems to randomize, perhaps. Like, like not like completely random, but it seems to like, as I saw before, it does seem to change. It's not entirely repeatable, and I'm not sure what the deal is, whether that's a deliberate decoy in the firmware, because on a well-designed product like this, they'd be aware of power line attacks, and you'd expect them to possibly build in some randomness, or, you know, to do some tricks in firmware to actually, uh, you know, to mask that sort of thing. So, yeah, perhaps that's what they're doing. So, it's like, even if there is a vulnerability there, well, you know, once again, like the two-digit sequence before, what does that, how does that help us? <laughs> Not much at all. So really, that's all I wanted to uh, check for today. Just once again, a very basic uh, power line analysis with a, you know, a, a, you know, as simple as you can get with a 10 ohm dropper resistor in series like that, and just a scope probe and just a scope doing that. You know, yeah, you can um, get better tools for the job like this, for like the uh, chip whisperer, which I had and things like that. You can really gain it up and see the noise and get averages and do, you know, get the uh, data out of the noise and all sorts of things. So I just wonder, once again, I'll probably still get complaints of people, oh, I didn't go far enough. But anyway, that's all I've got time for now. I've got to um, head off and finish uh, assembling my X-Carve live. Now, by the way, we're about to uh, switch that on live, but you won't know this because this video will be, uh, is not going live. So, eh, too bad. So yeah, we found a couple of interesting things there and there might be some sort of uh, vulnerability there, but uh, you know, it doesn't seem consistent, which is uh, really annoying. And as I said, even if you, even if there was a vulnerability there, once again, go through the math of how many. If you did that, had to do the whole six digits, even if there was a vulnerability there, um, with the like the three attempt, ten minute lockout. It's just you know, so you have to do it some other way. So I think just the way I've been doing it, the simplistic approach, it it seems reasonably. Um, you know, it seems reasonably safe, <laughs> pun intended. Um, but yeah, no, it doesn't mean this thing is not vulnerable. I mean, if you use much more advanced uh, power line attacks and things like that, uh, people have talked about like seeing the, uh, maybe the I squared C bus for this uh, keyboard, if it's like an I squared C bus might be in parallel with the one at the back. Nah, you know, I pretty much don't even have to test that. This is one of the best locks on the market, this Lagarde one, as I said before. And if it was that vul and if it was that vulnerable that you could read the code out of the E squared prom, which was hooked onto the same bus as the, uh, keypad, then yeah, that would be a well-known exploit. So, you know, I don't think they're that um, stupid. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. I'd love to do some, maybe I might do a, a video with the uh, chip whisperer, some more uh, advanced stuff and things like that. So this is just very simple. So please don't complain that I haven't gone far enough. I know I haven't gone far enough. It's just once again, just wanted to do some simple tests and we did actually see some differences there. So I'm actually quite uh, impressed by that. Uh, we did actually make a bit of progress even if it's uh, pointless. I, but I hope you found that an interesting video anyway. If you liked it, please be, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to discuss it, EV blog forum, YouTube comments, I try and read them all. Catch you next time.